It's a perfect afternoon for a skunk sighting on Santa Cruz Island off the California coast. The skunks are pretty rare these days. It's a joy when we find one. We're hanging out with the Nature Conservancy and Teens from LEAF, its environmental program for high school students. They're helping researchers preserve and protect the island and its species. They're looking out for the Santa Cruz Island fox and anything else that comes their way. These island skunks, they don't smell as bad as the skunks that you have in your neighborhood. Uh, these guys have a little foxy odor to them and a little less skunky odor, um, and they're not quite as bad to handle. Lucky for us, this one left as a happy camper. So you guys weren't really disappointed to see a skunk in place of a fox, huh? Eh? No, we don't really see, we've been here a couple days and we haven't really seen a skunk here on the island. We're used to seeing foxes all the time. And back on the mainland, the skunks are like bigger or like yeah. Yeah. movies, they have a giant it's white It's very stripe. smelly. Yeah. Yeah. Very spray smelly. everywhere. Like oh, the chances yeah. of not getting sprayed when you see a skunk yeah. on the mainland is so rare, but <laughs> yeah. we survived this one. Yeah, we did. We did, we're we good. Now back to the matter at hand, keeping tabs on the endangered Santa Cruz Island fox. These foxes are really small. They're about four pounds only. So that's a lot smaller than your average house cat. The workup kit is ready. And we don't have to wait long to find one. But it's a delicate situation. So the leaf teens must keep their distance. So right now we're masking the fox um, to try and limit his uh, stress level. If they're not seeing what's going on, it tends to be a little bit more calming for them. Foxes are vaccinated and tagged with a microchip, then get a physical. We also take a flea comb to him, and we have a protocol where we swipe three times down each side and check for fleas. This is again just to make sure that the fox is healthy. Um, we got one little flea in here. A bite bar is used so biologists can give them a dental checkup. This is our humane way of getting them to open their mouths so we can look at the teeth, make sure that there is nothing wrong um, in there. Detailed records are kept on every animal's condition. He's looking pretty good, the eyes look clear, um, parasite load is good, he's pretty healthy, and he's definitely feisty and ready to get going. So we are going to let him go. Okay, so we found our first fox of the day. Uh, was it a pup or an adult? I couldn't really tell. I don't have a frame of reference. <laughs> this was a young male. He was uh, kind of a juvenile stage, not quite a puppy, but a, a nice adult. He didn't have his canines in, so he's gonna work on getting those in. All of these efforts aren't lost on the leaf crew. They have to keep them healthy, so it's pretty awesome what they're doing right now. Biologist Adam Dillon is a two-year veteran of the project. Well, it's nice seeing them getting all excited. They're out there hiking right now. You know, this is a kind of amazing island. It's really near, you know, L.A. You know, to get out here and see how wild things are and also to be able to see just different endangered species, how the ecosystem works on the island is really a pretty incredible place to be. We come across several more foxes on the hike. Each gets a workup and all are looking good. So are their overall numbers across the island. Their populations have grown from an estimated uh, 85 individuals in 2002 to over 1,200 individuals today. It's proof ecologist efforts to save the endangered fox are working, something these teens appreciate. I think it's important to save these endangered uh, species, which is the, the fox here on the island, for future generations, for them to be able to experience the same things that we did. So it's important to keep this population on going.